What's up? I'm Chef Mark Noguchi. My friends call me Gooch. My journey through kitchens around the world has cultivated a deep curiosity towards the people and places that produce our food. Join me as we honor our community who live Aloha Aina, our love of the land. There's an old Hawaiian saying, you know, little no eao, about you know understanding where you come from and you know taking care of the place that you're from. There are a lot of individuals here, a lot of Native Hawaiians that live that every day. And having grown up, you know, deep in Manoa Valley, as a local Japanese boy, I wasn't exposed to this, on a, you know, on a daily basis. But for some reason, every time that we ended up coming out here, there's a certain different draw. There's a certain connection, and I feel that. While I did, couldn't see what that path was as a child, as I got older, things began to become clear on what my place was and, and how, what my responsibility was you know, to our home. I feel that a lot of the people in Heia, they always knew that. Wherever you live, you gotta have a reason. You gotta have a function. So my love of Heia is that it, it solidified the understanding of roots for me. You know, today, you, know, you, can, uh, you can get in your car, and you can drive to Fula, and you can go to the market, and you can get whatever you want. You think back in the day, though, people along, you know, all along the Aupua, they were experts in their fields. So if you were a fisher person, you know, that's what you did, you fished. And then to help sustain your community, you traded and you bartered with, with everybody else around. And everybody kind of worked together to make this, this land division thrive. And it was in balance, you know, everything was in harmony, everything, everything was perfectly in flux and in motion. And I think that that's something that we've forgotten. But what people like Papahana Kuola and Kako Oivi and Paipai Oheia and all these other unsung organizations, their goal is to bring back that balance. I don't think, you know, 90% of the people in Heia know that we even exist. A lot of what we have and what we're trying to produce here and, and what we're trying to reconnect people here is just simple understanding of, you know, your natural resources that have been here for hundreds of thousands or millions of years, they're still here. But it's really up to you guys to put the effort in to see it. Probably one of the biggest challenges the community have is access to Aina resource opening up these lands and these resources for the community to come in and grow food and learn about growing food and putting that food onto their tables is one of those challenges that we've hopefully found a solution for. Water is our biggest challenge. Without fresh water, clean, abundant, pristine, fresh water, you can't grow kalo. Without it, you, know, you don't have water to drink. Without it, you don't have the proper mixing creating brackish water systems and, and phytoplankton for our fish to eat. Rick Barboza. I love guys that are super, super smart, but you wouldn't expect it the first time you meet them. Because <laughs> Rick is just super cool and goofy and funny, yet every time I call Rick, I learn something. I will call Rick about plants, seriously, at least three times a month. And he always has an answer, and he's always so gracious about giving his time. Kaika Bishop is a beautiful representation of his family. All the bishops have been dedicated mahiai, dedicated farmers. And it has this amazing balance of understanding exactly what his place is in this world. When you watch him work at Kakuo Ivi, you watch the way that he loves on his fellow farmers, you watch the way that he loves on his family, and that love of land and that love of place extends through all of the bishop land. Hile Cavello definitely deserves her moniker of boss lady. You know, I feel that the majority of our extremely influential Hawaiian leaders are women. They live, breathe, and die for their community. 
Hile's family is from Ko'olaupoko. Her dedication to the fish pond, I think it shows that it's generational. One of the biggest problems with restoring ancient Ahupua'a in a modern era, number one, we always have conflict, internal conflict, with making sure that we're doing it correctly, or pono, with the plan and design that our ancestors had set forth for us. They didn't really hand us a blueprint, but they gave us a lot of clues. When we're moving into new areas, there's always that initial like, oh, I really don't want any change, you know, even though it's for the better. We're just trying to make more food or create more habitat for our native species. A lot of the knowledge comes in the deconstruction of the wall. In order to reconstruct it, you need to, you know, break it down. There's no manual you can read that'll that'll teach you and tell you how to restore a fish pond. You know, all of all of this comes through just doing the work. Our kupuna were presented with, you know, a different time, um, different challenges back then um, versus the kinds of challenges that we're presented with now. Papana Kuola is the visual representation of what old Hawaii looked like. More so, I also think it's a great school representation of how we can still maintain and cultivate parts of old Hawaii in a modern day era. But essentially, it all kind of starts here and goes down. You can't have a weak house foundation and expect the rest of the house to be solid, right? The type of restoration work that we do here at Papahana Kuola is both ecologically and culturally centered. We understand that the water that flows through Heia Stream through this property it affects everybody down below. One of the first things that we did was to try and mitigate the problems of invasive plants that choke out the stream. We tried to get good flow back. And we've been on this aina in Heia since 2005 and it's, it's been a real blessing for us to keep our feet and our hands in the mud with our nonprofit, Papahana Kuoa. To me, Kaku Oivi is the unsung hero of Heia. They're like this big water filter. Any major storms, any effluence that comes out of a septic tank, they need to mitigate all of that. So it's this delicate balance, it is this choreographed dance of opening up the waterway, as well as continue to support the fish pond below to make sure that their conservation efforts are completely in sync with what's going on. 20 years ago, none of this existed. It was basically considered a swamp, uh, a wasteland, and people didn't see very much value in it. I was asked to help farm here full time. Since then, I've seen so many beautiful things happen here. I, I basically fell in love. Every, every night I go to sleep, I dream about this place, and every single morning I wake up, I can't wait to get here. It's hard for me to say that we're doing something different because I believe we're all doing something the same. We're all working towards a singular goal and objective, and that to me is restoring the ecosystem from Malka to Makai. Probably one of the more obvious restoration efforts here is to cultivate taro, also known as haloa. It's a very important cultural food to Hawaiians, and we feel with the restoration of uh, that, that as a resource, we gain so many other aspects of our culture, um, learning about the cultivation of it, learning how to provide for your families again from the aina, and the keiki are able to experience this, and I think that's really the most important thing. Uh, is them learning that their cultural foods do exist and with healthy environments we can make more of these foods. Paipaio Heia is one of the largest remaining fish ponds here in Hawaii. Unlike other fish ponds where the wall system starts on, on each end of the shore and just kind of goes around, Paipaio Heia, shaped like an opihi, the wall system actually goes all the way around. And Pai Pai's goal is to restore this fish pond to a place where it can begin to sustain and provide food for their community. We've restored about 5,000 linear feet of our 7,000 linear foot fish pond wall. And restoration includes, first and foremost, the removal of invasive mangrove. 
and then um, once you have enough wall that is uh, exposed, you can then get in there and restore the wall itself. Fish ponds were built by the community for the community, and they're the stakeholders, and they're also the ones that should be doing the work. So the fish that we're growing in the pond, mullet, ava, other herbivores, are eating directly from the system. They're eating phytoplankton, they're eating algae, they're eating limu. But yeah, that's the idea. The idea is that the system, the watershed, is the food for the fish within the pond. The thing is, this fish pond traditionally would have supported the people living within this geographic community, so within this ahupua'a. Nowadays, we think of food in terms of intellectual, spiritual, and then physical nourishment, right? So that's kind of like one of the success indicators for us as an organization is the day that we're actually able to harvest fish in large quantities using the makaha then we really know that we've been successful. By working towards attaining food sovereignty, 100% locally produced food for local people, with that, we can attain a certain amount of self-governance. I think we knew that all along. We knew that when we started the work in Hei'eia, that it was always about food. Maybe we didn't realize that it would take us 20 years to almost get there. That's kind of all I want to do is just kind of make people realize that what we grew up with, what we thought was Hawaiian, isn't necessarily Hawaiian. And what really is Hawaiian needs to be saved. And all of this work, I think, is testament to the dedication that all of our leaders in Heia have had. You have these ohana lo'i, where you have families that have dedicated themselves to coming out every week, to taking care, to cultivating, to, you know, being a part of maintaining an Ahupua system. So the amount of work that it takes to maintain an Ahupua is pretty staggering because it's not just one family or one organization or one company. It takes an entire community to try their best to get on the same level of the direction that they want to go and the end result of what they want to see. Hey, he has blessed me with a family. It is where my relationship with my wife was cultivated. It provides one of the most beautiful lenses to look through of who we are as a people of Hawaii. And it also is home to some of my very best friends. Couldn't say much more about Heia.